mic already. Uh, Brian Martell is the managing director of the Environmental Capital Group. Um, he founded ECG with the goal of addressing the global environmental problems by significantly expanding private equity investment into effective clean technologies. Uh, he is appreciated as a vital link in the industry, fostering strategic connections and relationships between the investment community's clean tech solution companies, scientific leaders, and policymakers. So for those of us, including Mike, um, who have entrepreneurial ideas, we need scale, uh, Brian's going to let us know how we can finagle and get around the issues of uh, financing here and what we can uh, all maybe learn from, from his examples and also from Mike's. Okay, my on. Boy, that was a boring bio, I think. Um, so I've been listening to a lot of people's talks today, and one thing that keeps coming to mind is if you're going to solve these problems globally, you have to scale these solutions. Um, and that's something that Mike mentioned. Um, ultimately, we really need to value what we're doing, and it has to get integrated into the financial community. We, we need to value um, or, or, or put a price on the damage we're doing. We're not there yet, but we're, I'm trying to do that. Um, so a little bit about me um, and how I've been trying to scale solutions. Um, originally, I started work at, at Bechtel when I was working on long-term, actually not long-term, the plutonium uranium. And it, it, it's supposed to be temporary, the long-term solutions. That's another discussion. I then w went to Dow Chemical where we were trying to scale up solutions in plastics recycling and realized after working there for five years with Mike, we worked together, um, that Dow Chemical was, was a traditional commodity company and the last thing they want is for cause their customers to use their commodities efficiently. They would prefer that commodities get wasted as much as possible. That's their business. Their business is to take natural resources, transform them into commodities, and sell commodities. Um, so they want inefficiency, and people that sell electrons kind of want inefficiency, and people that move water want inefficiencies. So it's really screwed up. Um, and w I thought, you know, it was a Dow with Mike, we both left and figured, is there, is there some way we can try to make, add efficiency into the market? And we both started recycling companies. Actually, I worked for a company called MBA Polymers, um, or Mike Biddle and Associates at the time. And um, he started MBA Polymers, and I then started a company called Mobius Technologies. Mike went after thermoplastics, and I went after thermoset, so urethane, the, the largest volume of plastic market. We, 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 so, so I worked on that. And in the process of trying to scale up the recycling of thermo set materials, I learned that it was really hard to scale without money. And you needed to raise more money. Oh, was it? Okay, yeah. It was really hard to scale this stuff up out with, without money. Um, I eventually took the company into China, into Europe, and the United States. And um, we needed more money. And we started looking for venture capital. And I realized I'm an entrepreneur that, you know, if, if, if the venture capitalists didn't have the money, I would go try to raise the money for the venture capitalists. Well, it was true at the time. There was six or seven venture capitalists in the world that were investing in environmental technology to the total of $70 million. And they basically are using you because they're trying to raise money and they, they need what's called a pipeline of investment companies. And both Mike and I have been through this before. So how can I scale up my company when the venture capitalists don't even have money? So being an entrepreneur, I went to the largest, one of the largest investment groups in the world called CalPERS. And CalPERS is a pension fund. And it turns up if you want to move money into the markets, the pension funds have about a third of the total world's capital, about, a th about 30, $33 trillion out of $100 trillion. So that's the source of money if you you follow the route to the money. It's not, it's not plastics, it's pensions. <laughs> so, um, um, so I started working in California with the large pension funds, trying to mobilize capital for clean technology investments. And then we scaled it up to a US program and put together a pool of money of about $9 billion and then invested in companies in the United States to try to help groups like MBA Polymer be successful raising money. So we're trying to get the pension funds to value sustainability. Because as soon as they start valuing it, 
entrepreneurs try to make money and everything works much more holistically. And then we try to scale up one more time with the big eight pension funds around the world, the Chinese pension fund, the California pension fund, New York, the Dutch pension fund, the Danish pension fund, and the Australians. The Australians alone have a trillion dollars of money that they can invest. So I started something called the P8 with Prince Charles, and we're still trying to get that to work. Lot, lots of failures doing it, some, some significant successes. So now, I mean, how, do, how would you turn this back around to plastics? I mean, Mike and I both have run plastic companies. You need capital. I've tried to help bring capital into the market. It's a bear, but if there are people here that are trying to figure out how you scale up your businesses, uh, you know, that's what we're sitting on this panel right now for, is to try to help you out. So um, I had a question. Uh, one of our, we announced this earlier about the Plastic Disclosure Project. Um, and universities, but this is meant for companies and one of the driving forces for this project is that asset managers who care about socially responsible investing put plastic as a metric when they're looking at carbon, water, uh, other resources when they do their annual investment reports. And if you have the asset management world asking the question, all they have to do in my view is ask the question. It puts plastic on the radar and it puts this whole idea of these new technologies and opportunities and Mike's and Jason's and everyone else's uh, options here into the scalability frame. But how do we get these asset managers and the pension funds who have very long-term horizons on investment to care about what we're all talking about today? How, how can we get them to understand this? Someone from the Carbon uh, Disclosure Project, um, uh, Paul Simpson, was saying the people at the table who are not at the table at Rio are the pension funds. They control a heck of amount of money. They control the future of our lives when we get old. So we can have n money coming back to us, but not necessarily a nice environment to live in at that time. How can we change that dynamic um, and get them on the table a a a and helping you out at the same time? Uh, one of the, the things that, and Brian knows this every bit as well as I do, and he can even speak to it better than I can. So when, when Brian helps these pension funds figure out where to place their money, they place them with private equity firms and venture capital firms, at least a portion of it, because they need a high return on their capital. And Brian knows this be much better than I do. But I, then a company like mine has to raise money through the venture capital. I can't go to a pension fund. They won't even talk to me. I have to go through there where they send their money. Now, a venture capital firm is expected to learn, earn 40% on its money. That's their expectation. Annually. Annually. Think about that. Think about the pressure that puts on a small startup to, to meet those expectations. And I've raised $150 million in the last 10 years, and I've got a whole board of investors that every day want to know when are they going to get their 40% <laughs> annual return on their money. So take that investment, figure a 40% annual return on their expect expectation, and think about what I value I have to try to create to meet that expectation. So John Doerr, who I, was one of the guys I had mentioned in, or shown on the TED Talk, is one of the largest venture capital, most well-known venture capitalists in the world, Kleiner Perkins. Um, he started investing in clean tech. He found, and that's what the TED Talk was about. He, he sat, he's kind of found religion. He cried during his TED Talk. It was quite moving. He said, I'm doing this for my, for my children. Because how can I look at them in the face and say, I invested in software companies, but I let the planet get destroyed because I, didn't, I have all this money, but I didn't put it to the work for the right things. But since then, <laughs> he has said, this space, this clean tech space, is no place for venture capital. He has made that statement publicly because he got burned. Big capital investment plays are not where venture capital wants to play. They want to invest a very little bit of money in a software company like Facebook or a social media company like Facebook, I should say, or a software company. Low capital investment, high return. That's what they're looking for. Can't blame them, right? I mean, we all would kind of like that with our money. And it's because they have the pressure on them from the pension funds to deliver a 40% return on that investment if they can. So I, I think that the issue for many of us in this space in order to make a living, let alone a 40% return, but to make any living, to, make, to just get by and survive, because sustainability is not just about saving the planet. If the company doesn't save itself, 
it's not, you're not going to get the job done. So how do we build the infrastructure that costs tens of millions of dollars, which is modest in comparison to many other infrastructure plays, by the way? How do we get that? If the venture capitalists are saying, oh, I don't want to play in this, this world, the pension fund's saying, well, I need a certain return. It, that's, the, that's the big question. That's the billion dollar question well, in my mind. Tr trillion dollar question, actually. So you need about it. You need about a trillion dollars a year, plus or minus a bit, plus or minus a couple hundred billion, um, to take on retooling the energy markets over the next 50 years. So it's about $50 trillion over the next 50 years, which turns out when you divide it by the people who are causing most of the problem to actually be not a lot of money. Very, very small compared to what we spent fighting the Cold War. Okay? So these problems are, are solvable. You just have to value sustainability, or you have to value when you do damage. So this, the real answer to your question is how do you get the pension funds to do this for capital to move? You have to price carbon. You just have to price carbon. So it would be just keep trying to put pressure on governments and communities to get a value price on carbon. And really, you, you can't get a price on carbon unless the United States is going to do it. So if the United States doesn't do it, no one else does it. So it would be pressure on the United States to put a price on carbon. And it's really Congress right now. Well, 